It is absolutely uncanny. I think that the Patreon days that we had were the only two absolutely perfect days in a row that we've had for the whole summer. But I very much hope that it gets sunnier later because I suspect Nick wants to force me out for a walk. All is well with the world when you're making a persiade, which you seem to be doing quite a lot of the times that I actually see you. There's so many people love it, so this is go the, for it. This is the basis of French cooking. And it's with always persiade. Tonton Stephen who does it, He's always. He's master at it. Look at so, him. He's for those of you who don't know, persiade is a mix of garlic and parsley, and absolute basis, as Tatinette says, of so much French cooking, especially Mediterranean. Yes, yes. absolutely. You have persiade in every meal in the Mediterranean cuisine. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. So we went to collect the parsley this morning, mm -hmm. and I just said, this is very mm, very That's perfect. celery! It is celery! <laughs> <laughs> it's... Yeah, yeah, look, it so was in the we, same bed, we chip by jowl. Time. There might be the odd bit of celery. Are you, you thinking what I'm thinking? It looks so much alike. It's Bloody Mary, Tonton Stephen, you're being slow today. I'm not, I'm not a drinker. <laughs> I'm a quaffer. <laughs> and what is the meal tonight? Because you two are in the kitchen tonight. Yes, tonight we are having chicken provençal with fried pepper, fried onion, a lot of spices like tuna, um, and thymes. Olives. Olives, green and uh, black, and chicken. And I'll do it in advance because the, the longest you let it cook and reheat, mm. it the, the better. Of the sauce. Roasted cauliflower. We'll have um, new potatoes from the garden, which are over there. And I'm going to do a crêpe de courgette. And a starter, we'll have melon and serrano. Life is good. <laughs> Let's talk more chopping, more, more peeling. <laughs> oh, we can't even provide the parsley quickly enough no, for you to no, cut no, it. Machine, machine can cut Kelly. Beautifully cut. He's so good at it. Who needs a kitchen aid? <laughs> You've got Tonton Stephen instead. <laughs> you come up with a plan for fencing, is that right? Yeah, I've got a new attachment for the mill. Oh, oh, you got a new toy. It's just an attachment, but yeah. So we've been making this. Thank you. Oh wow. I can't believe our trees were that wide for a start. And that's after they've been cut down. Yeah. So we've been making the cross rails. So they're for Amory, are they, to use well, in building projects? Or? It's for the uh, fencing. Okay. So we're going to be, we're looking about one, one and a half metre high. Yeah. And they're in three metre lengths. I've got some twos over there. These are the cross rails. I've still got some more posts to make out of the trunks when we get them on there. Yeah. Um, but the idea is so we can just continue the fence, so it's a proper fence going all the way across. All the way across where? Where are we looking right now? Um, Here. To, to so, make this end more private for, well, safety yeah, basically with yeah. all the machinery running. Good idea. Uh, well, I've got the mills, a processor, so it can be gated off. Yeah. And it's Lovely. I think it's so impressive that you can make this. And look at this, these beautiful planks. These are just the off cuts. <laughs> wow. So is this all for fencing? Yeah. There, there and there. And then the off cuts. Yeah, and then the off cuts. And we've got some boards some boards cut already and it makes some more stickers to go in between them. Okay. Next time I'm here. And surely the boards can be used for something, the off cuts. Yeah. Kirsty's suddenly seen all this sawdust. It's like, yes, I can use this in the garden. Yeah, it's, nothing gets wasted yeah. here. And because the only um liquid I use actually in the mill is water. There's no chemicals, so it's just pure sawdust. Yeah. So even down to the chickens and things like that. Oh, that's fabulous. And then because I scraped the bark, we're going to have got putting all the bark through the chipper to make bark chippings. Nice. So she'll have the wood chippings, the sawdust, and then bark chippings on top of that, also yeah. utilised in the garden. That's perfect. So, and it's quite useful you using the tennis court. You claim the tennis court, basically, haven't you? Yeah, we have. <laughs> No one else uses it. So. No, no, you're right. And it's, it's ideal great. for me because it's flatter for this. Mm, it's perfect. It's easier for the machines for loading and everything. Yeah. Plus, Kirsty can pick this up easier. And there's so much of it. It's actually yeah. really fun to walk on. I know that sounds really stupid, but it's, but so, it's so soft. Oh, it's fabulous. I can't wait to see you next month then uh, yeah, to carry on with all back. this and see the fencing start. Yeah. You get that in. Exciting times, as yeah. always. Always when you're here. We try. Hello, little ray of sunshine. <laughs> Great timing, Steph. No, I love what you've done here. <laughs>
best timing. You should have been here yesterday <laughs> when it just looked very perfect, or this morning. This is the aftermath. It looks better with you in here, though. And I did come through yesterday, but you weren't in here, so I didn't <laughs> want to film it. Oh, you're so sweet. I'm just doing the flowers for the weekend. And Are these ours? Yes. What? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. size. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask them if they can divide them <gasps> this um, for next year so we can have more of them because they are absolutely stunning. Incredible. Yeah. You know, the, the amount of flowers we have on the garden is quite um, a lot. Yeah. Um, so I think at some point we'll probably be quite self-sufficient. I had told Jean-Baptiste that we were going to be using his flowers until our production was really up and running in the summer. So he does know that he we're knows. not carrying on all yeah, summer. I don't want to quit because he is wonderful. He's so nice. We have so much flowers. Yeah. And that is, yeah, I don't know. I love it. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm just making something for the breakfast table now. So I'm almost finished. I've just been here all morning. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> it just looks so a bit. It looks lived in and that's the way I like this chateau looking. It looks like I've just thrown everything all around me and uh, <laughs> yeah that's just the last last few bouquets are always crazy. You but created just... bouquets up here and a Jackson Pollock down there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah you just grab whatever and then you go crazy. <laughs> yeah I don't know. So please do, do not, I don't know, I feel like this is advertising me in a very bad way. No one's judging. <laughs> the thing about Nick is that he loves nothing more than forcing me to go on walks. He and my friend Liz in Scotland, it's their favourite pastime, forcing me on a trudge. And today is no exception. I have received this message from him and there's no arguing with that. So I'm preparing a sandwich. I've noticed there's a lot of raw onion here and I reckon I might be allowed to pinch a tiny bit and make a cheese and onion sandwich. Michael and I have accidentally worn exactly the same outfit. No, we haven't. Different shoes. Different shoes. Actually, these shoes are the only difference. Mm. Though my t-shirt's not quite the same. Swanky pants. <laughs> nice. Do you think I need Chateau Diaries ones now everywhere yeah. I go as well? Yeah. Oh, maybe some moles in the forest will see it and subscribe. <laughs> see, this is the way to travel. I'm being forced to go on an actual walk. I know. What's going on? It, it, it's not that damn. I should just jump in the back with you two in. instead. See, that's just what we should be doing. <laughs> See you later. See you this evening. Bye. Nick just said, I don't know why you're bothering to bring a picnic because, yes, it's not just a sandwich. Some biscuits may have been involved. He's like, it's only an hour. An hour? An hour? He has, however, made it a little bit more interesting. Oh. oh, we're going the wrong way. We're off to a cracking start, Michael. Yes. He has, however, made it especially interesting because we're going to explore the old estate of the Chateau de la Lande. The chateau used to have 600 acres, but they couldn't find a buyer when they tried to sell all 600 acres with all of the farms attached to that. And we bought only 60 acres and none of the farms. And Nick is taking us to see one of the chateau's old mills because it had two mills, not just our ruined mill, but another absolutely beautiful one on the banks of a gorgeous lake. And that is where we're walking to now. I say, I hope you're not going to do all 600 acres. We're definitely not doing 600 acres We'd because... We need more chocolate. Oh, don't worry, I've got chocolate biscuits. Okay, all right, we'll be all right then. <laughs> we're falling behind, Michael. Oh yeah, I think this might be a um, theme of this, this walk. Been here for ages, Hello. and you are so tall, Antoine. You're transformed. Yes, I did. Soon you'll be taller than Philip. Well, no, no. Yes, so. soon. Yeah. So not much in the way of a waterfall at this time of year. 
it's summer so we don't get as much water coming through this is usually raging in winter still just shows there's water all the time even in summer i love this part of the land with this sort of cliff face against the waterfall well water trickle right now and i think we're going on a path that's going to take us along the stream i think we're getting further behind mm. We've walked down to Lalande wetland, which will one day be Lalande lake. There's still the boathouse in the distance, the chapel and the chateau. And on the other side of the road from it, there is our ruined mill. So just bear in mind what this one looks like when we go to see the other mill. This is an absolutely darling farm that used to belong to Lalande as well. It's our neighbours, but it's not the one that we're stopping at. The one we're going to is quite a bit further still. I've just been walking down this really darling path and there's the chateau. I don't think I've seen it from this angle before. Far, far in the distance. Onwards, ever onwards. I think there's going to be quite a bit of huffing and puffing on this video, just so you're prepared. A huge tree has fallen in our path. Oh, I think we're gonna have to turn around and go back, Nick, for a cup of tea. Yeah. It's absolutely impossible to breach that. No, don't even try. No, Nick, no. Oh, no, he, he made it. Amazing. It is ridiculously beautiful around here. All these tiny little fields surrounded by hedgerows and little patches of woodland. And that's because there's so much granite in the soil, so it's not good for crops. So farmers haven't made those huge crops that they can get massive tractors into because it's too much work constantly digging out stones and rocks from the soil. So it's mainly used for grazing and here that tends to be cattle, though there are quite a few goat farms in the area, which is very famous for its goat milk cheese. Oh, we're laughing now, aren't we, Marie? Yes! Marie and I are the only ones wearing boots. No idea whether mine are waterproof or not, one way of finding out. Um, Whereas the men have to take the long way around. Oh, that's cute. It's a nice little bridge. And yet, Antoine, you still beat us yeah. in spite of our superior footwear. <laughs> Apparently, this is actually our stream, the stream of Lalande that genuinely crosses the road here and then carries on and feeds the lake that we're going to go and see now, the Lake of Bordesoul. And we are not just randomly walking on our neighbour's property. This is an actual footpath. It goes that way towards Lalande and we are carrying on this way to Bordesoul. I can't get over how pretty it is. And just through there, you can see the stream carrying on at the foot of the trees. I'm glad I wore wellies. Who's laughing now? One of the things that I find so extraordinary is along all of these paths and through our woods and the paths through our woods too, everywhere there are proper walls stone walls that must have been made hundreds and hundreds of years ago when this was all the estate of the chateau de Lalande. they put so much effort in oh sorry got distracted wild blackberry blackberries well you snooze you lose that's the danger of walking too quickly you see you miss things these are really intriguing stones and this one's been marked. The path does go down this way, so I think it's trying to tell us something. Nick's theory is that this wall was the ancient boundary line of Lalande's estate. Well, it's definitely big enough to keep those marauding hordes out. <laughs> All those badgers.
This entire area is filled with man-made lakes. Back in medieval times, they were an amazing source of food because, as you'll know from many monasteries, they always had a carp pond. And that's exactly what our lake was. It was a fishing pond. It's quite shallow, one, one and a half meters deep, but very big. The fish would be allowed to grow in there for two to three years, at the end of which it would be emptied through sluice gates and all of the locals would come and collect the fish as they were being emptied. And just the baby fish would be kept and put back into Lalande's fishery. That's a whole separate little area which we'll make into the natural swimming pond one day. Breaking news, Michael has found slows. Ta-da! You're just thinking gin, aren't you? I'm thinking gin. Also, I found a bug. But do you know, somebody in one of the uh, comments told me that slow tart is delicious. Mm. And I didn't know you could make that. But I think we have a bush we do have nearer a bush. to La Land. Yeah. Oh, but there's a lot here. So we should be able to pick them. Yes. Should we do that? Should we get one? Well, not right now, but shall we pick some? Yes. The way back. We should have bought a bag. We did. Nick's carrying it. Oh, well, this isn't ideal, is it? You know that shrill noise whilst we were talking about slows? Yes. I think that might have been Antoine sending a homing signal. Yeah. Because we walked a couple of steps more, realised we'd come to a road. We were just down that path. And we don't know where to go and we can't see them. And this way is blocked. Mm. I have no idea where they are. What about these berries? Well, I think, look, looking at berries has got us into trouble. Stop with the berries now. Do you hear that echo? Yes. Yahoo! I notice there's a lake through here, a huge one. Mm. Could Bordesul be down here? I mean, it's vast. Shall we go and... property pre -bay. Okay, shall we walk down here? Maybe I don't come on walks often enough. This is what I'm beginning to realise. No, me neither. And I'm with the man who, after 18 years, still doesn't know how to turn the oven on. So I think we're both in quite a lot of trouble. We guessed right. Here we are at the Moulin de Bordesoul, though we still can't find the Larkins. Isn't this the most beautiful spot? Just makes me dream of seeing Alain's lake back one day, though it won't be this size. This was always the biggest lake on the property. And just like our lake, there is a sluice gate on one side of the road and the old mill on the other side. And look how gorgeous it is. My mother absolutely fell in love with this house when we bought Lalande and she very nearly bought this lake and the mill. But then reality struck as we realised that we were going to have our hands full with the chateau and it simply wouldn't be possible for us to do justice to looking after this house. And now it's got the most wonderful owner who has spent the last 15 years fighting for his lake because he's had the same problems here as we've had at Lalande. And I think it went to the best possible owner. Something sinister Ooh. is afoot. Literally afoot. Werewolf tracks. Oh, you can spot a werewolf, can you? Yes. It's quite a small werewolf. I mean, just to look at it next to my boot. Mm. Yes, yes. Vicious nevertheless. Yeah. We're looking at this lovely field, one of the rare big fields around here. And Nick suddenly said he could see Lalande. And there it is. I think that's the spires of Lalande in the distance. It's an awfully long way away. Yes, Nick wanted to carry on the other way round, which I think might have been the long way home. Do you see the hill behind the chateau? That's where yes. the top lake is, right? It, it gathers from that high hill, I think. There was a lake up there. Did that belong to the property as yeah. well? So La Lande actually had three huge lakes. It went from the top lake, and then it came down into our lake, and then down to Borde Sul, where we've just been. And now we're walking round, let's face it, the long way to get back home. It's tempting to pilfer, but we have our own pairs at Lalande. I just need to get home. Finally, I recognise where we are. This is the road we take to go to our local village. 
Ah, well, I could have seen that sign as well. <laughs> Here we go. We're on the final stretch. Annoyingly, I've spent the last 10 minutes of the walk limping quite heavily because my right hip has decided to be a bit gammy today. And it's been a bit gammy on and off for about a year and a half now. And I just keep thinking, must be a bit of early onset arthritis, but perhaps I should get that seen too. Anyway, just to lift my spirits when I was frankly more embarrassed than anything else limping along, we're past the most stunning field of sunflowers. Isn't that spectacular? I absolutely love living here. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, I love traveling, but I can't imagine ever living anywhere else. Yeah, this is home. This is home. We did a good thing all those years ago. Yep. A good thing. Well, this is embarrassing. I have just phoned Philip to rescue us. Well, me. You're being very sweet walking at a snail's pace. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, how far have we walked? Well, it's nearly five kilometres. Five kilometres? In 80 minutes. Well, that's because I'm basically like a slug in terms of speed at the moment. At least we haven't started going around in circles. <laughs> that would be really bad. I'm not in that much pain, but my hip just doesn't seem to move any faster than this. It's so embarrassing. So I think that I need Philip to come and get me. Otherwise, I will not be ready for the guest dinner tonight. So he's sending out an emergency convoy of, well, just one emergency vehicle. But I felt convoy sounded more dramatic. I don't mind so much. Only Nick's gone with the biscuits. He didn't even <laughs> want the biscuits. He didn't want to have to carry the biscuits and he's taken them away from the people who would lighten that load. I can't even see him. I think they're, I think they're probably already at home. <laughs> Having a cup of tea and the biscuits. Yeah. Yeah. There he is, my knight in shining armour, picking me up about 10 minutes from home. <laughs> you are an angel, you know that. I saw Nick and Marie and Antoine and Leslie on, on the way and they said, just keep going straight ahead. <laughs> so they knew what you were doing? I think so. They took the biscuits with them. The well, biscuits! At least it will give you an incentive to walk because it's like the, the, the donkey and the carrot. Oh right? yeah, that might, might have been what he was trying to do actually. Oh, look at that. That's a more speedy arrival. This just feels good. We've just parked the car on the way home because seeing those slows on the way made me wonder if maybe the slows are ready up here near I think the that's bees. What Nick and Marie Anton were calling you. Yeah. Oh, There's <laughs> no need for that. Bingo! I can see four individual slows. Oh no, no, slightly more up here. And yes, there are more. Philip, we can make our own slow gin. Okay. We need to come out and pick them. I would pick them now with the bag, only Nick stole it with the biscuits. <laughs> and just for those of you who haven't seen here, just around this corner is where the local beekeeper keeps all of her hives. And in return, we get 10 kilos of honey a year from these marvelous bees. I won't get any closer than that. But they're lovely at a distance. Time to limp back to the car. Oh, come here. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to tonight's dinner because Michael's going to be joining us in the dining room and I have busted out the celebratory cat dress. And Philip has made a pink and green delight. And I have to say, Marie's flowers absolutely yeah. make the table. Aren't they gorgeous and tiny little posies all the way along? I'm going to call everyone in, darling. Sure. You're from what you're wearing, Marie. It's beautiful. I did show the little cat. Beautiful. I'm wearing the shoes that you got me, which I, to be fair, can't walk in. And I'm not bad with heels because it's so high that I'm like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like Bambi, Bambi on ice. <laughs> We're in the same colours. We are matching. Well, I think that's the start of a good evening. Another dress of mine that looks better on you. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. No, it does. You look gorgeous. really pretty. And um, this table is beautiful. Thank you. I was just pointing out your flowers. <laughs> they always inspire me. So today for the set of uh, Melon Dispatcher with Keith and Liz and Smarters from the garden and the And then a uh, crispy prosciutto and a uh, goat cheese and herb cream. Ooh, nice. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, lovely. Hey, lovely Maria. <laughs> well, for the uh, main, we have a meat tenderloin with uh, roasted carrots. Oh, carrots. 
that's uh, the rainbow, purple, yellow, and orange. And then uh, we have some broccoli, uh, candy strip beetroot, and the sauce is red wine and our blackberries. Wow. Gosh, wow, thank, thank you. you. That's incredible. Oh. Oh, that does look good. Mm. Check everyone the beautiful beetroot from the garden. Well, for dessert, we have an orange polenta cake uh, with some fromage blanc and some vanilla cream. Thank you. That was a lovely meal, and now I am absolutely exhausted because I have eaten way too much. So I'm going to go and get ready for bed and I'm going to sleep like a baby, super happy in the knowledge that Nick and Michael are here with the lovely Marie and Antoine and the whole gang is back together again. And I'm never happier than when that's the case. Well, Mummy and Percy and Jerry were here too, that'll be good. Thank you for joining us for our exploration of Lalande's old estate. But for those of you who would like to discover something a little more exotic, in this week's travels with my friend Oli and I are in Istanbul to uncover the secrets of the Pera Palace Hotel. Built in the 19th century to welcome the guests arriving on the new Orient Express, the Pera Palace was a beacon of luxury and elegance. It remains as beautiful as it ever was and it holds many secrets, such as what exactly did happen to Agatha Christie during her mysterious disappearance. Tonight, I'd like to say a special thank you to the patrons of Lalande, Dan Bando, Wailing Banshee, Cecilia Begum, Denise Behrens, and Amy Bennett. Thank you so much for supporting the Chateau Diaries. And I'd like to let all of my patrons know that this week's patron video is the full concert that Maria performed during the patron days at Lalande, with each piece being based on one of the ladies of the Chateau. Lots of love to everyone watching, and I can't wait to see you again on Sunday.